although I'm not used to playing in the daytime. <laughs> I'll try my best. I thought I'd just play a few things and uh, talk a little and then play a little more and then we can have a chat. You don't ask me anything if I answer any questions, I'd be very happy to. Um, as long as they're not too difficult. <laughs>
Thank you very much. That very first tune that I played uh, was written by Henry Mancini, who wrote some amazing music for so many movies. Uh, that was called Two for the Road that he wrote for the, the movie Two for the Road that starred uh, Audrey Hepburn. And uh, I have a little connection with it because uh, for 11 years, from 1979 until 1990, I toured the world with Stefan Grappelli and, uh, of course, who everybody knows from uh, uh, being the, the, set, the other half of the, the Django Reinhardt, Stefan Grappelli, uh, uh, amazing experience that happened in the 1930s that we, we all still listen to it, it, uh, with amazement now. So for, it, was, it was great for 11 years to sit in Django's chair uh, the hot seat and try and keep it warm. So, um, but, but Stefan Grappelli played the, he played the violin on that movie, uh, Two for the Road. The second tune was uh, Gershwin. Uh, a lot of people know it. It's been revived uh, by a number of singers now. They can't take that away from me. I'm going to play something. This is something that Tommy Emmanuel and I recorded together on an album we, we did called The Colonel and the Governor. Um, so in, in Tommy's absence, I spoke to him the other day, as we were chatting with him, we keep him in contact quite a lot. And um, in his absence, I'll, I'll, I'll play his bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell him if he's here. <laughs>
just to show you that sometimes you know, it's, not everything is um, kind of arranged. There's a lot of improvisation in what I do. So what I do, just to prove that point every so often, I try something out and put in some deliberate mistakes so you can get it. <laughs> Hey, I went for it. It didn't quite work exactly. Like that. I was thinking I'll have to rethink that one. Uh, yeah, I I started playing guitar a long time time ago. Somebody asked me the other day, and I, I had to kind of add it up, and I realised it's 58 years, which is a long time to be playing one of these things. And uh, it's been an amazing thing. Uh, my dad was a jazz musician. He was a, a bass player. And I grew up on the music listening to Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli, so it was amazing for me then, when I was only 22, to then find myself in that gig with, with, with Stefan. But in those days, there wasn't really, you didn't go to music colleges to, to learn, learn jazz as, as, as you can do now or on the, in, on the internet. Um, none, of that, none of that was happening. So I just used to sit in with my dad's mates, with my dad, and, uh, and learn. Uh, learn lots of tunes and start to play that way. But then the thing that fascinated me, my dad used to put these records on of uh, piano players, of uh, Fats Waller and Art Tatum. Guys, they, they play stride, stride piano, and I, I thought that was fantastic. And then when I started working with piano players, it always amazed me when somebody came up <coughs> and they would say, some, they would say can you play such and such a tune? And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, how's it go again? And, and they would just sit down, all the piano players I were, but they could do that, just, just play. Whereas with guitar, there were so many obstacles to get over with, with, uh, with playing the guitar. So that's how I got into wanting to play solo guitar. And there were very, very few jazz guitar players that were playing solo. There was, I could think of um, George Van Epps, the great seven string guitar player, and of course, Joe Pass. Barney Kessel, to a certain degree, I also played uh, played solo guitar, but actually specialised in that. So, what I started to do was I just listened to piano players, and I could see if I could copy what they were doing. And that, that stride piano on the left hand. I was I think what it, what it was it was I asked the piano player, what is it you do there? He said he said it's a tenth. He said it's like at the seven. It's like the the third. When you get down here, it gets really heavy. So I've two elephants walking down the street. So what you do is you just take the third and octave higher. It's a sound we're all familiar with. I learn the tune, I, I learn the melody, I learn the chords, and then I break the chords just down to a major and a minor tenth. So if I'm playing... Jazz chords, it's got a 13 and a flat 9 and a, a demented 12th and something like <laughs> that. What am I going to do, do with that? I like Ray Charles. Ray Charles had a. Ray Charles used to say something. He said, he used to talk about a chord that he called, Ray Charles called it the prejudiced 11th. You can play it on all the white notes or all the black notes. <laughs> Ray Charles, what a great guy. <laughs> So we got you just break it down to that, and it becomes so so much simpler. And then I, I met this guitar player. Uh, he played with Stefan Rapelli before I did. His name was Ike Isaacs. And uh, I went to his ha house one day. I actually did a gig. Uh, I worked quite often with Barney Kessel, 
And I did this gig and Ike came along and he was, got talking and he said, come around the house uh, for a place. So I went to his house and he said, what do you want to do with the guitar? I said, well, I'd really like to be able to play solo. He said, well, play me something then. So I said, okay. So I sat down and I went. something that um, incorporates that kind of stride, um, stride piano, that left hand of the piano. Uh, play another Gershwin tune, I Got Rhythm. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Kind of running out of time, but is, if there's any anyone would like to ask me some questions, I'll be happy to try and ask. Yes. I think the best way to get into improvisation actually is, is not to think about what you can what you can play over sequences, but actually go back to the way the, the old old jazz musicians from the old days, Louis Armstrong and Django and how they big spider bed, how did they used to improvise? They used to take a melody and play a melody. They hope they so they knew the chord structure and they played a the melody and then they just varied the melody. So I think rather than very often with my students, I because you say, right, now let's, let's do some improvisation. You can see their knuckles go, oh, improvisation, I can't do that. So I prefer to use the word variation. So if you had um, anything for uh, say, well, I know this scale works over, over this chord, uh, and then I can, it will lead to this, uh, this next chord. But by never losing sight of the melody as well, it, it's less mechanical. It just starts to sound more musical. It doesn't mean you have to stick with the melody all the time, but if you refer to that every so often and use that as a, as a kind of starting point, and also, a really good thing to do when you go from one chord to another, you know, I was talking about just simplifying everything to those basic intervals. Just target the note. So, so you can target the third. So, a D seventh, G seventh, C seventh, F. So, you can target the third. So you, you have trouble uh, improvising because you're thinking too much about all the, the things that you, you need to play or what you can play over a chord. So it's just another way of doing it. From there you can take it further out, you can start adding chromatics. Um, Weapons and guitar players are small, and also the one most guitar players have to 
greatest difficulty in mastering is silence, mm -hmm. knowing when not to play, when to leave space. Do you find it easier or harder to sort of really get a grip on that in a solo context versus a band context, or do you see it as roughly the same thing? Okay, why do guitar players play too many notes most of the time? Uh, I think security mostly, I suppose. Maybe. I, I think there, there, there's a different reason for every individual in that regard. The main thing, we don't have to breathe. <laughs> we just keep on going. Like a saxophone player. So, so what? Yeah, so yeah. So what I do is when, when I'm playing. When I was playing that. This is probably my, my, one of my least favorite tunes. I don't know. I'm a player. Tones you can get 
just just with where you actually hit the strings. So kind of running out of time, so I'll, I'll, I'll oh sorry. Okay, very quick. If you got a quick yeah, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your plays. Thanks very much. It was great. Um, uh, what uh, what makes you fall in love with the guitar? Oh, that's a good one. I think well, I think all guitar players. One of the things we, we like to feel of playing the guitar. I think that's always good, isn't it? You know, just just very holding tactile. it. Yeah, it's a very tactile thing, isn't it? I couldn't imagine playing a trombone. <laughs> <laughs> but the guitar is lovely. You know, holding onto them. Um, I, I think one of the things is as well. You can become. It can sound good quite quickly. Have you ever met somebody that doesn't like this? I can't stand acoustic guitars. I've actually never met anyone that says that. I've heard people say I don't like electric guitar, or I've heard people say I don't like the trumpet, or something. But I've never actually met anyone that says they don't like the, the acoustic guitar. And we can learn chords. Suddenly, you're invited to every party. <laughs> everyone, everyone, like suddenly you're everyone's friend. Um, and then as you go on, you start learning more and more, more things, and you realize just how little you know, and there's always something new. You can never master it. There's always something that this thing is keeping away from us. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, folks. Thanks for coming on. I'll quickly play something very, very quick for you. Josh, take your time last minute. Are we OK? Yeah, it's OK. All right, OK.
going to be downstairs hanging out at the uh, Fibonacci stand. He's at 45. Uh, see the guys there. So if you're, if you're around, please come along. Come and say hello. And uh, if you want to know what I'm doing and what I do, just go to my website, martintaylor.com. Everything's there. In fact, too much is there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to play for you.